Today I'll be talking about the 1966 movie An Eye for an Eye, so... Spoiler alert! Preface and bias. In the house I grew up in, and to this day, when I visit, there is always a western movie or TV show playing somewhere in the house. I'm familiar with the genre, but I'm aware of more titles than I've actually watched. Now you know where I'm coming from, let's start the timer and get to musing. The opening of the film credits the person doing the intro whistling, and I think that's amazing. Story premise is very simple and follows a trite but welcome western trope. Bounty hunter Italian is away from home, bad guy Ike, played by Slim Pickens, kills his family and burns down his house, kicking off the classic revenge story. Italian teams up with a younger bounty hunter Benny, played by Pat Wayne, who is one of John Wayne's sons. Wayne inflects his voice a little like his dad, but unlike his dad, I don't mind his acting quality overall. Takes a little doing. Speaking of quality, this film holds up well in audio and visuals. It's not super washed out, grainy, or impossible to discern dialogue from music, as has been my experience with other old westerns. There are some fun stage tricks used for lighting and audio. I can't hardly believe that. Believe it, I. Oh, and the gimmick for the story seems to be the crippled companionship where Italian, whose shooting hand is smashed, has to act as the eyes for Benny, who is effectively blind after the first encounter with Ike. I didn't mention until now because I honestly didn't find it that fun or interesting. A few of the things I liked or at least found valuable. The short and sweet running gag where Benny teases Talion about being the better, younger bounty hunter. So in response, Talion keeps beating Benny in a mock drawdowns to show he's still got the edge. I actually laughed out loud at one of these. Good night, boy. This kid, Johai, acting like he's big boss of the town, is a very fun bit of levity in contrast to the opening scene. Oh, who's the big boss around here? You're talking to him. Oh. This is your place, huh? There are some hard moments where the two male protagonists bear their emotions and vulnerabilities to one another, and I think that's pretty cool, especially for two rough and tough bounty hunters. Starry that ten star makes all the difference in the world. He's the law, kid. You ain't never gonna know what that feels like. I don't need to! On top of that, a small conversation occurs that brings up the value of actions versus assigned labels, which is still pretty relevant to today's exhaustive corporate title bloat. The number one bounty hunter. What's your number? Look, when I call you that, I'm calling myself the same thing because I'm killed for money, too. But I ain't gonna make up any fancy names for it. Two things that didn't sit well with me. Johai's father assumes Wayne and Talion are lawmen and respects them for chasing down dangerous bad guys that they may have to kill. You boys federal? Keeping your badges hid that way is a good idea. And even personally makes way for Talion to romance his daughter. But later on, he turns hostile to them because he finds out that they're actually bounty hunters who chase down bad guys that they may have to kill. We'll be well off with them two man killers out of here. A good man just don't hunt down other men to make a living. Like, I don't get it. He made an assumption and then his assumption was wrong. So he's mad at the people he assumed about? He lied to me too. Whatever. Both Ike and Benny are reported as crack shots either by other characters or sequences shown in the film. Ike slants a top gun. A top gun, no. No, Ike Slant is the top gun boy. But compared to how Robert Lansing handles his firearms on screen, these two look a bit too loose and sloppy for my suspension of disbelief. <laughs> Couple of things that caught me off guard. Johai's sister Bri becomes romantically interested in Italian instead of Benny, even though the latter is closer to her age, and that's not my assumption, the movie tells me that. If I were you, young fella, I'd be mighty careful. We don't get many young men passing through here. <sighs> I suppose it breaks expectations, but it still confused me since Italian just lost his wife and son, and I didn't think he'd be after a new woman so quickly. Near the end of the movie, it's revealed that Ike killed Talion's family because Talion actually killed Ike's brother, meaning the titular revenge story actually began before the movie started. Why'd Slant kill your wife and boy? When I was bounty hunting, I picked up $500 for his kid brother. That's not that deep, but I thought it added a little bit of flavor to the old trope. The only thing wrong is that Ike never mentions this himself, so maybe it was a late addition to the script. Ike, why my wife and my boy? Why not me? Why? just wanted to give you a little something to live with. It's gonna be a real pleasure killing you two. Fun facts about the people involved with this movie. 
The story was co-written by Bing Russell, father of Kurt Russell. Joe High is played by Clint Howard, whose father, Rance Howard, plays a minor character in the movie. Rance Howard is also the father of Ron Howard, who directed Solo and Apollo 13, the latter of which is just one of the many films he directed that his brother Clint, father Rance, and daughter Bryce all appeared in. I brought all that up because this movie is brimming with star power and Hollywood nepotism, but the Wikipedia page for it looks like this, where the plot and cast sections can't even agree on the relationship between Joe High and Bry. In the interest of leaving something better than you found it, I made a few adjustments to the page myself. However, my wiki account isn't trusted enough to add a poster, but maybe someone else out there could do that. I think this red one would be nice. There are no videos on YouTube that I can suggest as a follow-up to this one, so I leave you with this link to City Eleven's review of Outlaws. It's just as pretty as yours, Anna. Here are the rules for a western, right? If it's an old-timey western, James's wife Anna is gonna die. If it's a revisionist western, everybody's gonna die. If Tarantino made it, everybody's gonna die. And the little girl killed them. And that's it. Bye forever. What do you think you're gonna do? Come and lead me same as them? Just thought I'd see how it felt.